No, the, the first time I think I truly realised the impact it had. People used to say to me, oh, you're Australian icon and stuff like that. And I would think, you know, those little wooden statues in churches are icons, you know. Um, and I guess it was around when the term Australian icon was first being bandied around and you don't kind of really relate to what it means. Yeah, so for the 20th anniversary, the Sydney Uni decided to do a symposium on the case. And I thought, oh yeah, there's, you know, there was going to be some talks with this one and that one, and they asked Stuart Tipple to do a talk, and they asked me to do the keynote speech, and there was going to be some forensic ones, and I thought, yeah, that's interesting. I think it's a good way to celebrate the 20th anniversary, and then I got there. And I discovered there was, um, all these workshops and a lot of them were concurrent so I couldn't go to everything but there was one on the influence of the case on the gay and rights movement and I'm like had no idea uh, and they're saying you know we think that Lindy is the poster child for this and I'm thinking well that's interesting um, I don't know why they picked that. And then it was the influence on Australian humour, uh, the influence on Australian poetry, the influence on artworks, the influence on music. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, this is way out of where I expected it was going. But all these people doing university papers and everything they had to apply to the university first to be accepted and they weren't not everybody was chosen the these were the the top things that were chosen and there was 20 or 30 lectures over the weekend of all these different things and it was fascinating and um, Dr. Adrian Howe did her doctorate on the letters and so there's this whacking break doctoral thing and what she picked out and saw as important and why it was important and everything else is absolutely fascinating reading and quite different from what you picked out. Um, and she was fascinated to see that she had written to me and it was in there and that I had written on a letter in the end, Adrian is a woman, not a man. Because um, it's spelled the men's way, but she's a lady. So little things like that. And you think, wow, this has got a whole life of its own that I had no idea that it had because there's fields here that I never would have imagined that it's crossed over and so I guess that's and then not long after that um, the National Library told me that they had more information on the decade of the 80s in their collection than anything else thanks to my letters and it was becoming increasingly obvious that people asking to research them were not researching the Chamberlain case, which is where I thought history down the track is going to ask some questions and therefore the more, um, the more information that is available from people alive at the time the better because you know a hundred years down the track they're going to say well we know that this actually happened when they have when they don't know and they only do that in absence of evidence so if the stories are in there from the people who were part of it they're not going to make those erroneous assumptions 
but then all of a sudden I'm being told, well, we're looking into food of the 80s, which has nothing to do with the case, but it's there in the letters. Political um, influences of the time, it's there in the letters. And that's when you start thinking, okay, better take a little more care with these because there is so much more um, of worth in there than what you originally saw. And so you can tell on the letters where I started because I picked out specifics to the case only. And then as I went on, I realised, no, you should do the whole letter because there is so much more. And to have to read all the letters is, I know how long it's taken me, so you need that quick snapshot.